Tonight on Man Alive, meet Sherry, a remarkable 10-year-old who knows more about living life to the full than most of us can ever hope to learn. It was the little prince who complained that adults never understand anything, making it tiresome for children who have to keep explaining. Hello, I'm Arthur Kent. We forget how wise kids can be. So when someone like Sherry appears, we should pay attention. She knows how to live with grace and generosity. It's a room much like the room of any well-loved child. Crowded with small comforts and the hopes and dreams of a normal nine-year-old whose life seems endless and full of promise. That's Roberto Alomar, my other favorite. But Sherry, a and baseball fan, is no ordinary nine-year-old. In this picture, I have a bracelet on my wrist. And in this picture, I have a, ro a watch. He gave me a watch, and I gave him my bracelet. And in this picture, I see my bracelet on his shoe. The trouble began with a lump in Sherry's knee when she was seven. Diagnosed as bone cancer, it spread to her chest. Suddenly, life became a widening circle of chemotherapy and surgery. Nine operations in two years. Sherry doesn't like to talk about it too much. Um, there's moments when she's with me alone, she will ask me questions, and I will answer them as best I can, and then that's it. She doesn't want to talk about it anymore. She just wants to be like any other kid. But most other kids aren't acquainted with words like cat scan and remission. While for Sherry, they're part of a language that's become familiar on her journey through cancer. As familiar as the path to the hospital, the constant tests, and the hope the cancer's finally gone. Today marks a tenth step on that journey to hear the results of her latest CAT scan. For Brenda, as for most parents of children with cancer, it's become a voyage of endurance into a different world. Dr. Mark Greenberg. Okay. When I meet with parents for the first time, I tell them that we are entering a process in which several things are going to have to happen. They don't know me, but they're going to have to trust me, and I'm going to have to work to gain their trust, because together we are going to treat the child, and the process of treatment brings the child close to the brink of death repeatedly. Chemotherapy and surgery are the main partners in the process of treatment. But what is cancer? And why does its treatment sometimes seem worse than the disease? What cancer is, is a disorder of the growth of certain cells in the body. And those cells grow at an increased rate and in a disorganized fashion, so they don't stop growing. What chemotherapy is, is drugs that stop the growth process. One of the problems with chemotherapy is that it doesn't have a label on it that says cancer cells only. So it in fact does affect all cells that are rapidly growing in the body. Children on chemotherapy lose their hair and suffer from nausea. As their white blood count drops, they fall prey to frequent infection. Cancer cells don't recover from this treatment, but normal cells do. At Toronto's Hospital for Sick Children, the outpatient cancer clinic's a busy place. Yet for patients and parents, time seems to stop, suspended in a grim battle for survival, where the latest test results can turn hope to dread. 
I'm scared. Sherry's hopes have been dashed. Her latest CAT scan shows new tumors. They don't keep coming back or that they can't take it out. Dr. Greenberg explained to us that there's uh, two tumors in her left lung. And um, he explained that the, the more frequently the tumors come back, um, the harder it is to take care of the problem. And um, he suggested that she have open lung again on her left side, and um, he lowered her chances to about 15 to 20 percent, and they want to operate immediately. You, know, you have to treat this thing somehow. Leaving it alone, it's going to take over. So uh, we've never considered giving up. Hopefully we never will. It's the day of Sherry's operation. She's been waiting seven hours for surgery and hasn't eaten for 16. But her high spirits sustain her parents and everyone near her. Well, I've seen Sherry since um, her tumor spread to her chest. And uh, that's been over the past year or so that I've been treating her. And we're about to perform the fifth operation on Sherry. It's amazing, she knows exactly what's wrong with her. Okay, turkey. But she has chosen to live her life in the best possible way. Kisses and hugs. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you I won't see you tomorrow, I'll see you I'll see you tonight, that's right. Okay? For sure. You're the one that's going. I'll be there. Okay, wave goodbye. Bye, Sherry. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'll see you inside. As long as the child is alive, there's hope. And I think that most families come to realize that uh, it is cancer and it might come back. And um, the fact that we're able to do something is another part of the hope. If we absolutely couldn't do anything, uh, it would be a lot more devastating than having five more operations, I can tell you that. You can't stand waiting for, for something to happen anymore, and there's nothing you can do but wait. Waiting creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress, and it's one of the hardest things to do. There's the emotion, there's, there's the, the pain, and uh, the disappointments through it all. Pain. But the, the biggest one, the hardest part to deal with, is the waiting. I couldn't help but think, she's been so lucky every time. She's not going to be lucky this time. It's, yeah. you know, it's just yeah. too good to be true. I mean, the, uh, I was so worried. I was scared to death. And I know John was too. And when he told us that he removed the tumors, all of them, I've never felt so much joy in all my life. Um, I'll never forget it as long as I live. For the next few nights, while Sherry's in hospital, Brenda, filled with new optimism, stays at Ronald McDonald House, where she finds a sense of solidarity and caring, among other out-of-town parents. If you're upset about how the day went or something's gone wrong with your child and you need to talk, there's always other parents walking around at night. You can go talk to any one of them. And they become very good friends and they're there for you if you need support and vice versa. To tell you, remember we, we used to call it by the proper name, <coughs> lymphoblastic lymphoma. I, we, we, I had a real hard time saying cancer. It takes a while before you really come to terms with it, that, that your child has cancer and you have to deal with this and it's a long road ahead. Before I went to bone marrow, I said to my mom that um, I need a hug every day to get through all this pain. Hey, 
<laughs> Once you become so close to all the parents here at the house, um, all their children become your children as well. Um, you know, you're focusing on your child a great deal, but you also start to focus on what's happening to, to the other children in the house as well. Children who have cancer and survive are a new breed of human beings. Uh, they didn't exist 20 years ago, uh, or not in any significant numbers. So we've got this bulge of kids coming down the line who are long-term survivors. How are these children going to do in terms of making their way through life? What happens to their self-esteem? Are they able to re-enter school and, and cope successfully? Every time she is coming out of the hospital and coming back to school, I always think, how on earth is she back here so quickly? Because she does seem to bounce back and want to be here <clears throat> more than almost anything. I think Sherry really has affected all the children in this school, and she's affected any adults that I know that have come in contact with her. She's amazing. You know what, if we got the big thing and put what up on each one's bow, we could, for the, we could do that easily. I don't think I ever realized how deeply, how almost painfully you can love a child. When I look at Sherry, I often think of my own son. You know, you think if it can happen to one, it can happen to anybody. And I guess it was after her surgery when we were just so excited about, about the fact that they got all the, the tumors out that um, we had a, I guess we ended up talking for a good half an hour, 40 minutes about cancer and one of the kids, and this was maybe the first time that anyone has said this, one of the kids put up his hand and said, could she die? It was absolutely silent in the class. I guess it was just before she went in for her last surgery. She asked her mom to come in and talk to the class about it, and her mom came in and was incredibly, almost brutally honest and frank about everything that Sherry's going through. And uh, it was Sherry that asked her mom to come in. She wanted the kids to know what was going on. The message she seems always to convey is of courage, a refusal to be held down by illness, an insistence on living life to the full and sharing her strengths with others. She loves children. She loves to help the kindergarten kids in school. She goes there uh, on recess time and plays with them and reads to them. She likes to be the, the leader, the motherly type. I guess probably you're hearing a lot about, you know, the, the real serious, sorry, somber side. And I think it, you have to remember, too, that Sherry is still a kid. She's still got that little bit of imp in her and that she still likes to be funny and silly and get into mischief from time to time. What was that? Her sister, Lindsay, helps celebrate Sherry's 10th birthday. But an upcoming test result shadows the day. You always have the hope that there's going to be some good news there. You just have to hope that someday that good news will come because uh, so far it hasn't been a lot of good news. Jerry, can you eat all that? Arriving to hear news of her latest CAT scan, Sherry and her family ride yet again the familiar roller coaster of hope and fear. It's a ride that seems unbearable and unending. You never get used to a child relapsing. And you never get used to telling parents that a child's relapsed. One develops a certain professional space because my job is not to be a friend or a, um, personal uh, advisor. My job is to look after the child. And sometimes that's even harder because based on my professional expertise and experience, I often know what is coming in a way that parents or friends can't. 
No, I'm just wondering, like, is it actually tumor there, yes. or could it be scar and your, you know? Sure. There's too many. Sherry has now had a total, I believe, of five operations because we have used most of the known, all of the known effective drugs in this disease. We have not given her more chemotherapy to this point. So it suddenly becomes detected. Now, however, we are at a crossroads. She probably has had as much surgery as we can safely do, and she does have tumor again. And all we can offer is experimental drugs. I don't know if they will work or not. I think that's unlikely. You want the best for your kids, and uh, you want to protect them from all this, but you can't protect them from cancer. There's nothing you can do to protect them from this. You wonder why you were the, the one out of, uh, you know, the nine children out of uh, two million or whatever cases a year that come up. It seems very odd to you, you know. There's, there's no way to make it make sense. And the first thing that went through my head I'm not gonna give up. And maybe not so much that, but I'm gonna go through it with her. And I'm gonna keep her going, as I did in the past. I'm gonna keep her going, I'm gonna keep her strong, and I'm gonna keep her spirits up. And no matter how bad the news gets or how bad things turn out, I'm gonna be by her side and be there for her right to the end. Their path has narrowed to one agonizing decision, should they stop treatment or risk experimental, possibly painful chemotherapy, knowing her chances are slim. Sherry's already chosen for us anyway. She doesn't want to be left alone and stop all treatment. She knows exactly what she's in for. She's the one who had it, so she's the only one who can say what she wants. And if she knows what she's in for with chemotherapy, and if she knows how sick she was before, uh, obviously she's willing to take that chance. Parents are, are given that, you know, that question at times that uh, let's stop all treatment and just enjoy whatever time she has left, but she's not gonna let us do that. She's gonna keep demanding it. She said if the drug doesn't work, she wants the surgery. They don't wanna operate. She says if they don't, I'll make them operate. Sustained by their daughter's spirit, they keep fighting, heading this time for 8A, the floor for ongoing chemotherapy. I think Sherry feels comfortable when she goes for her chemo on 8A because um, for the kids, they're, they're not really embarrassed about uh, what the chemo does to them because they see each other go through good days and bad days and they know what to expect when they go in. There's a lot of sick children in 8A. People have this morbid thought of going into a, a cancer ward in a children's hospital and seeing severe suffering and pain. It's not like that. 8A can also be a happy place for these kids. The chemotherapy drug being tried on Sherry is called Topatican. It's never been used on her type of cancer before. Some of the things they do know about this drug is um, it may not make her very sick, which it hasn't. Uh, she hasn't been vomiting. She hasn't been uh, very sick. It just makes her sleep. She just wants to sleep. And um, she was also told she may not lose her hair. She may. She wrote a note this morning. She left it on her dresser by her bed. A note that said, I don't want to die, I want to fight. We enter people's lives at a very intimate, primal level, and we're involved in every aspect of their lives. The reality is that, that when your child's undergoing treatment for cancer, you, you don't know whether you can go to the movies. Uh, can your child go to camp? Um, 
What should we do about school? How do I handle the brother, the sister, the grandparents? So it, it touches the way people live. And that's kind of a privilege. When I noticed I was losing my hair, I was at school. And um, I went and called my mom. I got a phone call from her explaining to me that her hair was falling out fast. It was around her desk at school. Uh, every time she touched her hair, a clump was coming out in her hand. I lost a, bo a bag full t in two days. I wanted to pick her up and hold her, but Sherry's really not the type of child that you can do that with when she's struggling through something that's very, really upsetting her. She likes to, to um, tell me about it, cry about it, and then she's over with it. Five minutes later, she's fine. Well, my mom called my teacher, and she told the kids in my class. They not told them why I was upset and, and um, not to ask me any questions. She cried for uh, maybe 20 minutes in the office and then uh, never asked to leave school, went back to her class and carried on with the day, which uh, I'm proud of her for. I don't think there's any uh, prescription on how to handle it. It's, um, it's frustrating. You know, you think about it at work. Uh, tear comes to your eye in the weirdest places sometimes. And I guess uh, there's no way to handle it other than to try and keep our keep ourselves together. You know, keep our heads together. Let's say. Just keep going for Sherry's sake. I think I've learned to uh, maybe spend more time with her than I might have given her. I, I want to do the cucumber. Because I know that uh, she might not be around for very much longer. You want some more? More. That's not enough. You want me to do it? If you eat them all, there won't be enough for the salad. I think the main thing that keeps us going is Sherry. Um, she's full speed ahead. She's full of energy. She's full of fight. <laughs> she's always going and she's always strong. And she doesn't give us a chance to really feel, you know, the added stress because we're so busy trying to keep up to her. You just keep going on every day because you don't have any other choice. But also because Sherry, she's decided to just go on with life and not dwell about it and not let it get the better side of her. Dad, don't forget my hat. So we've in a way learned from her too that that's what we'll do. We'll go on with our life. Right.